Hello, hello. Here is the video going over our lesson on solving proportions. So first and foremost, let's talk about a few definitions. What is a ratio? A ratio is a comparison of two quantities. There are a couple different ways that you can write a ratio. Sometimes you'll see it written as a fraction, like one fourth. Sometimes you'll see it written with a colon in between. You would read that as one to four. Or sometimes you may even see it written out as one to four in that manner. What is a proportion? So when you set two ratios equal to each other, you get a proportion. The key, oh, don't know what I was writing. I think I was thinking about what I was gonna write. The key is to have an equation. So when you set two ratios equal to each other. So we are having an equation. Equation. What do ratios and proportions look like? They look like fractions most of the time. And how do we solve fractions? We solve equations with fractions by multiplication. So we are going to be doing a lot of multiplication as we solve um, different proportions. What is the difference between a ratio and a proportion? The key difference is a proportion is an equation. A proportion is an equation. Okay. So let's go ahead and start solving some of these proportions. So for number one, you can see we have two ratios set equal to each other. So I have four fifths equals x over 25. Anytime you're solving a proportion, you are going to cross multiply. So I'm gonna go ahead and start by multiplying four and 25 together. Still going to put my equal sign there, and then I can multiply five and x and that just leaves you with a regular one-step equation for you to solve. First, we need to multiply four and 25, that's 100, equals five x, divide both sides by five, and you get x equals 20. We should always check our answers, so just to double check, I'm going to plug in 20 for x, and see if it gives me a true statement. So 20, over 25 reduces to 4 fifths. So we can see that it is correct. Letter B is uh, changing things up a bit, making it a little bit more complicated, but you're still cross multiplying. So I have two times 10 equals, and I'm gonna cross multiply over here, five times x minus three. So if you'll notice, I put x minus three in parentheses because that is an entire quantity that needs to stay together. And I can see with that five, I'm going to have to distribute it because it's hanging out in front of an expression in parentheses. So five times x is five x, five times negative three is negative 15, and on my other side, two times 10 is 20. I can go ahead and continue to solve for x. So 20 plus 15 is 35 equals 5x. Divide both sides by 5, and I get x equals 7. Again, it's always good practice to check your answers. So I'm going to plug in 7 for x. So 7 minus 3 all over 10. And let's start reducing. 7 minus 3 is 4 over 10. Both of those are divisible by 2. That's how you reduce fractions. I'm going to divide them both by 2, and that gives me 2 fifths, which is exactly what this side equals. So my correct answer is 7. Going to do the same thing for letter C, cross multiply. I have 4 times x equals 3, I'm going to put the 3 in the front, times x minus three. So four times x, there's really not much we can do with it at this point, but I can distribute the three into the parentheses. So three times x is three x um, minus nine, after that multiplication, equals four x. 
We do have variables on both sides, so I'm going to pick one of them to move. Um, I like to pick the smaller one, so I'm going to subtract 3x, and I am subtracting because I'm moving to the opposite side of the equal sign. 4x minus 3x is 1x equals negative 9. All right, let's double check this. So I have negative 9 minus 3 over negative 9, and I want to see if that equals 4 thirds. So negative 9 minus 3 is negative 12 over negative 9. Both of those are divisible by 3, so I'm going to go ahead and divide both of those by 3. I also know that a negative divided by a negative is going to be a positive, so this is going to end up being a positive 4 thirds, which is exactly what we had over there. So lots of cross multiplication. After you have done the cross multiplication, it just goes back to your basic equation solving skills. Our second example is looking at percents. Now you can solve percents a couple different ways. You can solve them with proportions or you can solve them with um, equations. So I'm gonna go ahead and start by solving with proportions, but if this method confuses you, we can also set up equations. So when we're solving with proportions, here's what you need to remember. You're going to remember the phrase is over of equals percent over a hundred. So here is what I mean by this. It says what is 25% of 84? So I don't know what the is is, but I do know it's of 84. So I'm going to write this as x over 84 equals 25 over 100. And then from there, we can use the same cross multiplication skills that we just learned on the other slide and continue to solve. So I have x times 100 is 100x equals 25 times 84. I'm going to go ahead and plug that into my calculator, which gives me 2,100. And then I can divide both sides by 100, and I get x equals... 21. So this is one method of solving. Another method of solving um, percents is I can change my percent to a decimal. So 25% is actually the same thing as 0.25. And if I want to take 25% of 84, I can just take 25, 0.25 times 84. So 0.25 times 84, hopefully that still gives me 21, which it certainly does. So it's up to you on which method you choose. If you want to set it up with proportions, you can. If you want to do the percents, you can as well. So I'm going to do um, the is over the of again. So 20 is what percent of 140? So the 20 is the is of 140 is my percent, which I'm trying to figure out, over 100. And once again, I can go ahead and cross multiply. That gives me 140x, uh, got a little ahead of myself, equals 20 times 100 is going to give me 2,000. And then to continue solving for x, I can go ahead and divide both sides by uh, I feel like I did something wrong here. 2,000. 20. Let's see here. So I have 20 over 140 equals x over 100. Actually, no, I'm on the right track. Sorry, I lost my train of thought. 20 times 100 divided by 140 is approximately 14.29%. Now, another way that you can figure that out is 20 is what percent of 140? You can also take 20 and divide it by 140. That's going to give us a decimal. So 20 divided by 140 is 0.1429. And then you can move the decimal over two places. So that gives us 14.29 percent. So either way, you still get the same exact answer. 
All right, so that concludes our lesson on solving proportions.